Welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining us today. We know you're busy. We're grateful that you took time out of your day, out of your day to join us. And we are here to help you streamline your processes and your communications to help you be more effective while out in the field. I'm Dan, and today we have one of our product managers with us, Lane. Hey, how's it going, Dan? Going well, thank you. Good. How are you? Doing, we're doing really well. Good. Good. Would you mind telling us what you do? Yeah, so like Dan mentioned, my name's Lane. I'm one of the product managers here, which probably doesn't mean a lot to a whole lot of people. Um, but product manager is a fancy way of saying I, I talk to customers, I talk to um, users every single day to figure out what your problems are with either existing functionality or new functionality um, that we don't currently solve. Uh, and then I relay that to a development team that then builds solutions to solve your problems. So yeah, that's really essentially neat. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and so uh, like Dan mentioned, we're going to talk about forms today. And I'm really excited to talk about this, this topic. Um, and, and specifically, we're going to be talking about the, the top three checklists uh, to reduce and repeat site visits. As we talked to customers, one of the things we heard time after time, and, and it started becoming a pattern, was uh, that information was going missing when they would go out on a job site. So the right information wasn't getting relayed back to uh, people in the office that needed to consume it to, to create an estimate or whatever the case may be. Um, this this caused a whole bunch of problems, but one of the big problems was it meant that someone would have to go back out on site to actually get the information that was missed in the in the first visit. And that costs money. That costs money and time, right? Uh, and honestly, it it, uh, it paints a bad picture of your company to whoever the homeowner is or whoever the customer is. And so we're trying to prevent those things from happening. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the template builder or the, the form template builder, and then we're going to show um, what that looks like on mobile. So while, without further ado, I'm going to go into the actual uh, form builder itself. So if you're an administrator for your company, um, you'll have access to the settings page. That's where you're going to set up your forms templates. And in this case, uh, for my account, I have a handful of uh, forms that I've set up. But the three that we recommend that regardless of what industry you're in that you set up is a sales inspection checklist, something that you do before you've actually won the business, something that would then inform uh, the creation of an estimate or something like that. You have an install checklist for the day that you actually go out on site and start doing the install of what, whatever you're doing, and then in post install checklist. This is especially important because that's the last time the customer is going to be um, having an interaction with your company or one of the last times. And so you wanna make sure that interaction is a good one. And so I'm not gonna look at each one of these individually, um, but let's jump into the sales inspection checklist and we can start figuring out, okay, what does this form builder look like? So I'm gonna go ahead over to the overflow menu and click edit. Now I've already added a whole bunch of questions to this um, particular form, but you can see that each one of these rectangles represents a different question. Before jumping into that, every single form has a name and it has a description if, if you need a uh, more description of what the form is to be used for. Um, but once you start getting into here, you now have the freedom and flexibility to add any question that you want to this form. Before we jump into the actual question types that we support, let's actually look at kind of the anatomy of a question. So like I said before, this rectangle represents a single question. So in this case, we have the question type as a number. So we're asking for a quantity, or in this case, an age. So we're asking for the roof age, how old is your roof? Now, once again, we are not filling out the form at this point. We're building the form for someone else to um, be able to fill it out. So someone at the office is creating the template and someone in the field is going to be filling that out. Um, now we have the ability to make a question required. In some cases, we recognize that not every single question is gonna be relevant for the job you're working on. And so in those cases, you would not toggle this on, you would keep it off. But if it is something that is always going to be uh, present on the job, then you're gonna make that required to make sure that the individual who's filling it out has to answer that question before they can move to the next question. You then have the ability to delete a question if it's like no longer valuable or relevant to uh, the form itself. And you also have the ability to reorder them. So if it makes more sense to ask this question before uh, another question, I can do that pretty easily. So that's basically the anatomy of a question in and of itself. We'll just briefly now talk about the question types that we support. 
So if I click on any of these pluses throughout here, I can add a question in between uh, questions or down at the very bottom, I can add one to the, the end of my form. So if I come back up here, we support eight right now. So checklist, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll, I'll give a little description. Checklist is if you want them to be checking things off as they do them. Um, so you saw earlier that I had a install checklist and a, a post install checklist. That's basically, have you done these things? And they check them off when they have, they, they keep them unchecked when they haven't. Multiple choice, our, our next question is actually an example of that, where we have like a yes, no, or maybe there's four um, possible answers. The next one is photo, and I do want to um, spend a little bit more time on this one. Photo is awesome. The reason why it is awesome is previously when you're taking photos, you rely on the expertise of the individual taking the photo to know what to take the picture of. But now this is a guided process. I can now say, um, you know, I want a picture of the front elevation, the left elevation, the right elevation, the rear elevation. I can do all those things. Now, when you get the photos back to the office, you're not missing them. You don't have to send, uh, you know, Joe back out on site to get, the, to get them again. The next one that we have is date. So if the customer has a preference in, in when the install date happens or something like that, I can um, provide a date uh, question in there. Number, we already saw this one. We asked for the, the age of the roof, but this could be anything. This could be any sort of quantity or uh, measurement. Um, so maybe it's pipe jacks. How many pipe jacks do you have? Maybe how many linear feet of fencing do you need? Um, maybe it's how many square footage of uh, or cubic feet of uh, gravel is necessary for the job. This can be anything that you want it to be. Short answer is when you're indicating that you just need a little bit more description of something and they have a, a free field to put that in there. Drop down is similar to multiple choice, but it's when you have a longer list of things to select from. And then paragraph. Paragraph is interesting um, because this is where we're seeing people put a lot of additional uh, comments. Um, so if there are things that aren't covered in the form that but need to be um, relayed back to the office, this is where we do that. Now, I think that's probably all we need to look at here, but really where the aha moment or the magic happens is when you see how this translates over to mobile. So we've now set up this template. I'm gonna go ahead and save uh, the form template and Dan's going to switch over to mobile and show exactly what this looks like in the mobile experience. Yeah, so we are currently working with Gene Gray. Uh, we already had our admin create a form in the web app. Now it's time for us to fill it out on site. So I'm going to go ahead and click in Gene Gray's uh, page, click on the blue plus button and select form. Here are all the forms that I have available to me to fill out. We're going to fill out the sales inspection checklist. As you see, this first question I have is required. I cannot move on. This next button is grayed out. I cannot move on until I type in a number for how old the roof is. It's 15 years old. It's about time to get a new roof. Have, a, have you ever had a leak in your roof? Yes. Jean has said she's had a, a leak. Have, if yes, when and where? It's been uh, five weeks. It's been a little while and it's on the north side. That's where the storm's been hitting really hard. So we're gonna go ahead and click next. Here's another required. Are there any damaged shingles? Yes, there are, unfortunately. And now we're at a photo. So we're going to add a photo of the damaged shingle. Oh my heavens, there is a remote in the shingles. That should not be there at all. So we're going to go ahead and add that to the form so that we can see that damaged remote in the shingles. And now we're onto the question where she, we're working with her to figure out when we want to install, when she wants us to install this roof. She wants it as soon as possible. It's already been five weeks. The soonest we can get her in is next Wednesday. So we're doing that. We're going to say next Wednesday. And now we're at a drop down of what color are the shingles currently? We're going to select gray. Jean Gray's shingles are currently gray. And now we have additional notes. This is a this is optional, and I don't have any additional notes, so I'm going to click next. Before I submit the form, I have the option to review my answers. I can click on the arrows here to pull down each section to review the answers, make sure that everything's been filled out correctly, and then click submit. Now, as soon as I submit this, this is already available in the web app, so people back in the office can review the form, and I can review it here. If you're on the web app, you can go to the contact or jobs page, click on the forms tab, and the form is right there. Or if I'm on the mobile, I can click on forms, and here we go. Here's the form that I just filled out. I can review all the answers. 
I can uh, view the image of that damaged remote and it's all right here. I can even see that I did not add any additional notes. So we try to make this as easy as possible for you to fill out in the field. And we love to hear any feedback you have about the mobile app or about, uh, about forms. So go ahead, if you have any uh, feedback, go ahead and click on your profile and select uh, leave feedback right here. That will send an email to our mobile product managers. And if you have any feedback about using forms on mobile, they'll work with uh, Lane to see about getting that implemented in a future build. And here at Job Nimbus, we want to make sure that you have all of the resources you need to be the star player in your company. So we have resources for you. For example, we have the crew. We actually have a crew event happening next week. The crew event is amazing. We're having it next week. We're having it in future months. So go ahead and go to jobnimbus.com forward slash events. Sign up for the crew. You, this is an event where you get to come to our office. You get to rub shoulders with like-minded individuals in your industry. See what processes they're using to streamline their communication and be become more effective in their company. See if you can use those in your company to level you up. We also have a webinar coming up on May 6th where we're gonna be talking more about being on site at the job, giving you secrets to manage your job while on site. If you're in the web app, you're creating the forms and you want more resources, see that question mark down there? It's usually followed by a red bubble with a number in it. We have notifications in there. We have tips and tricks in there. Go ahead and click on that and see all the resources we have available to you. We also have the chat bubble in the opposite corner, which allows you to chat with our support reps. If you have any questions and you need help now, go ahead and chat our support reps. Other resources we have, we have YouTube videos. Go to our YouTube channel and check out our videos we have there. We have our previous webinars up there that go over all of our different features. We also have videos to help you build a better business. If you want more resources on forms, how to build forms, how to fill them out, where to view them. Check out our support center at support.jobnimbus.com. We have so many how-to articles for you. And if you just need to talk to one of our support reps, there's our phone number. Give us a call. Our support reps are happy to help you through any issue you have in Job Nimbus. We are opening it up to Q&A. We have so many questions. We're just going to jump in right now, uh, go up to the top of our q a here lane do you see being able to pull form uh, reports on forms yeah we've actually had an increase of people talk to us about um, wanting to to re do reporting on forms i i totally see that as a, a a future functionality we don't have it today um, but it's definitely something that we have our eye on okay and follow-up question uh what about printing forms yes that, that one is a definite yes we, we know that um, we need the ability to not only print forms but have the ability to share those out with homeowners, insurance adjusters, um, other folks as well. So we are going to have that, um, and, and that's something that we're going to be working on relatively soon. Okay, and w do you think that we'll be able to send those to customers? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to be able to do that. Okay, so that's that's all coming in, in the near future, so keep an eye out for that as well. Are forms attached to contacts? Uh, for example, could I use it as an incoming call checklist? Yes, you can build a form for an incoming call checklist and they are attached to contacts. Right now, uh, you'd fill out the form in the mobile app. So as you're on the call, uh, at the, it looks like it would be at the office for incoming call checklists. Um, you just use your mobile app to fill out that checklist. But I heard down the grapevine, this is a sneak peek, that you're thinking about being able to use them also on the web app. Yeah, so the, the primary use case for forms was really out in the field, right? So when we when we built this, we did we decided, okay, we're not going to delay getting this out to people um, until we have the ability to fill out a form on the web. So we went with the mobile use case first. But you're absolutely right. We are going to build this for, for the web as well. So in the future, you'll be able to create a, a form template specific for like an intake phone call of like a new customer. So the answer is yes. Yeah, that's coming in, in the future. But right now you can create that form um, on the web app and then just fill it out on your mobile app as you're doing that intake call. Next, can this create a document? Yeah, we've, we've kind of answered this one already. Um, the answer is right now, no but we are absolutely gonna do that. There's gonna be some sort of like uh, output document from a filled out form because we recognize that right now if this were like a paper form, um, in, in many cases you would fill it out and then you would show that or give a copy to 
um, the homeowner or whoever. So we're absolutely going to do that one. Yep. And will it be able to trigger automations? Oh, that is really cool. Yeah, that, that's a great question. So today when a form is submitted in your activity feed or in the activity tab in the contactor job, there is a record that says that a form was submitted. You can create an automation based off of that uh, off of that activity feed that could um, trigger uh, a, a task to be created or something along those lines. So the answer is yes. We're going to continue to enhance that by creating a new record type um, in automations, but that's forthcoming. But the answer is today you can do that. It's by doing a, a note contains automation. So, and, and if you call into support, they'll they'll help you. Uh, uh, do that. Perfect. Glad we were able to help you with that. If you take a, a picture in forms and does it save two photos? That is an excellent question, Martin. And the answer is yes. Yes, it will save to the a contact or jobs fo photo gallery. Let's see here. We already answered about um, a templates. They're coming. And uh, do photos taken with forms get saved? Yes, we answered that. Perfect. Okay. I, I will say that like um, once you get a, a hang of creating the form, it doesn't take that long to actually convert what you have on paper into the actual uh, form builder. Like I've done it now for several of our customers and it's pretty simple like once you get the hang of it. So like you could probably convert a uh, one of your paper forms or even if you have it built with like Google Forms or something like that, you could probably have it done within, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes depending on like the complexity of the form. Uh, can you link the address to Wazi for directions? So yeah, we, we now support Apple Maps and Google Maps, at least on iOS. Um, and Android, I believe, is just Google Maps. But yep. um, it, it's something that we can look into. Um, the, the industry standard is, is Google. I do want to put in a plug. We're also going to start supporting that in the, the web application oh, nice. as well. Um, so now there's going to be some level of validation on every address that's put into the system. So that way it's not like you can't miskey something and then create a contact or job uh, with a wrong um, address. That's really neat to know. Will we be able to send forms okay, to, uh, to customers to fill out? Yeah, we, we've heard this one a lot as well. So like even before you go out on site, um, can you get like some sort of information from the customer to make your on-site visit that much more uh, productive? Uh, the answer is yes, we will have that eventually, um, but not in the short term. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate you all coming in and thank you so much for joining me, Lane. Oh. This is, you're amazing. I love you being here and giving your insights. So we're going to end the call there. Thank you all for joining us. We'll talk to you later. Come back for our next webinar. You are all amazing. Goodbye.